Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Friday, March 1st. So happy March. Um, this will not be a regular stitching update, so if that's what you're looking for, wait till next week, um, Monday or Tuesday. This is going to be a fancy lady parade. Mostly mirabilias, some lavender and lace, some Nora Corbett's, and one Joan Elliott, one Shannon Christine Designs. But I'm going to show finishes, whips, and haul, or not haul, stash. Um, so if that's not your jam, um, I'll see you next time. If you are in, into that sort of thing, buckle up. <laughs> it's going to be pretty. <laughs> so for first, I'm going to show my finishes, and these will be chronological. So first, I thought I would show um, this fancy lady, which is not one of the aforementioned um brands. This is Victorian Lady by Dimensions, I believe. It was a Dimensions Gold Petite, I believe. It's a 5x7 frame I found at Walmart. Has little beads on the back of her dress and couching to do the lace on her um, dress. It says 18 count Ada and the frame here is stitched but the background is not. So I thought that was an interesting thing too. This was finished um, August of 2000. So I guess 19 years ago. And this was my first fancy lady <laughs> that I finished. <clears throat> the next fancy lady I finished was my first Mirabilia. This is Midsummer Night's Fairy. And here she is in a kind of a put together by myself frame. Um, this is a, a frame I found at Michael's that I could you could buy the the this length in a pack and this length in the pack and then put them together. You can see like right there. I put it together myself. It's not a great frame job, but it's a beautiful piece and I am able to look at it every day in my bedroom. And so it's worth it. It doesn't really matter <laughs> if it's framed horribly. Um, it's still pretty. So this I finished in August of 2001, just a year after the other one. <clears throat> So that's my first Mira. <clears throat> the next one is also a Mira, Autumn Queen. I finished this in October of 2005, which is appropriate. I finished it in the fall. This was, um, I believe the first queen I bought was Winter, but then when she came out, this Autumn Queen came out, I decided, oh, she has to be my first one. I started, she's gorgeous. So I love the colors in her. She's very saturated. Um, with bright jewel tones, not really bright, but very saturated jewel tones. And I love this, um, these beads. It's like a string that you put together and then just tack down. So that was really fun. <clears throat> so that's Winter uh, Autumn Queen from 2005. I had a comment recently asking if I ever plan to finish any of my Mirabilias or if it was just stitching them for fun. So I thought, you know, it had been a while since I've shown my finishes, um, probably two years since I started my channel. I have a finished parade back then, um, but a lot of people may not have gone back that far to see that. So I thought, let's share because yes, I have six Mirabilia finishes and I do plan to finish the other ones that I'm working on eventually. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of them. They do take a while, um, but I do plan to finish them. So the next finish I have is Mother's Bliss, which I finished in December of 2005, so just a couple months after the other one. And I think I was a lot more monogamous back then. <clears throat> um, so this one does not have any beads. All of these so far were on the called for linen, 32 count. The first one was like a, you know, a smoky blue or whatever that was called for and the Autumn Queen was on white. This is on like a natural color. And her apron is not stitched at all. It's just white space. So this one actually went really fast and it currently hangs in my daughter's room. All my, my uh, fairy hangs in my room. The queens take their turns above my desk in the study, depending on the season. So the next one, which is the reason why I'm doing this parade today, is Spring Queen, and she goes up today. I took my other queen off, and she's going to start her reign above my desk. 
I finished this in July of 2006. <clears throat> and she also has a lot of pretty colors. Lots of beads on her, not anything in this part of the flowers, which I thought was interesting. There's some around the edge and in her um, ribbons, but not anything in the flowers. <clears throat> and lots of beads on her uh, ribbons and the edge of her dress. <clears throat> so this is Spring Queen. I'll put her up today and she will stay up until I think September 1st, which is when um, Autumn Queen goes up because I only have um, Autumn, Spring, and Christmas. So they're not evenly distributed quite yet. <clears throat> the next one is Seaside Kingdom, which is not a fancy lady, but it is a Mirabilia. And I finished this um, on March of 2007. When I found out I was pregnant with our first child, I thought, I have to do this. Put it up in, currently it's hanging in the hallway next to my kids' bedroom doors, and it's a joy to look at every day when we say goodnight to my sons. This one has a lot of white space, stitch on white fabric. Um, so there's a lot of white space in the castle and an enormous amount of beads and treasures, which was a lot of fun to stitch. The kids are the bulk of the stitching, and they're not that big. So definitely doable. This is an out of print pattern. A good amount of these are out of print now. But I bought them But when they were still fairly new. This one was actually being retired. Um, and I, I had always loved it. And I had heard it was being retired. So I went out and got it right away. And then um, when I found out we were expecting, I thought, okay, it's time to start it. And so I finished that in 2007. My son was born a few months later. Um... The next one I finished was one I don't currently have anymore. It's Lavender and Lace's The Bride. I'll insert a picture of it. I had started this because I've always loved wedding dresses and um, had, had briefly considered being a wedding planner or a wedding dress maker or designer or some such nonsense with wedding dresses. So I started this one, but then I ended up not really wanting to keep it. And I sold it in my Etsy shop, presumably for somebody making it as a wedding sampler or something, or just somebody who wanted wanted it. I don't remember if they told me. Um, but I sold the finished product, so I just have a picture of that one. And that was done on 18 count beige Ada with petite beads so that they would fit. There was only one color of beads and they were white, so I just found some petite ones instead of the regular size. And that turned out really pretty. My next finish is Royal Holiday, which a lot of you probably would remember from um, November of 2017. She is so pretty. Very saturated and she is just coming down today from the end of her reign because she will normally, when I have all of them finished, all the seasonal queens, she'll only be up for the month of December. Or like um, right after Thanksgiving through New Year's weekend, which is usually how long we have our Christmas stuff up. So that's when she'll go up. But um, since I don't have Winter Queen finished, she kind of stayed on the wall through winter as well. Because why not? She's so pretty. Uh, don't want her to be washed out. So there she is in all her prettiness. Such rich colors in her robe. And I love the, the extra little beads and bling here at the bottom, which was kind of a surprise to me when... I had forgotten it was all down there until I got down to the bottom. So there's Royal Holiday, my most recent Mirabilia finish. I have one more fancy lady finish that's by Shannon Christine Designs, which is another recent one. I just finished this in December of this past year, and it's not yet framed. This is Snow Queen, and I, I bought mine from... A World of Cross Stitching magazine, but you can also find it in a, another Cross Stitch magazine. The I don't remember which one. Another UK one printed it again, and then the, it's on her website as well. So she's got lots of Krynek and bees. This is on 14 count light blue Ada that I got from my grandma's stash. <clears throat> um, Royal Holiday was actually on 32 count brown of some kind. It was the called for fabric as well. I didn't stray from the called fours um, until floss tube. 
So those are all my finishes for Fancy Ladies. And I will now move into whips. These are in no particular order. Um, I had the finishes in order, but the rest of these, I don't know when I started them. And you'll just see them as they are and however they, however far they are right now. So first one on the pile is Ashley's uh, Adia, the Garden Fairy. Um, Belinda, the Aussie Stitcher, just finished this one. Or, yeah, did you, I think she finished it, yeah. And I have everything I need for that one. It's kind of a hot mess in there right now. This one is on, I think, probably the called for brownish green linen, 32 count, as these all are. All my Mirabilias are on 32 count linen. <clears throat> and this is how far I am on Adia the Garden Fairy. Started her while I was on vacation visiting my mom, and she wanted to see what... I started kind of in the middle and worked my way to her face, and then and she wanted to see what a wing looked like all put together. So I did this top portion of the wing 100% with the stitching, the crinic, the crinic back stitching, and the beads. So that's a completed top portion of the wing. And then recently I brought her out and did more in her ro roses and things. So, <clears throat> not a whole lot done on her, but she's really pretty. <clears throat> and she's got lots of treasures in that, especially in that um, garland that she's holding. There's lots of like leaf shapes and flower shapes. That's pretty fun. And my next whip on the pile is Lady of the Flag. I bought this at an LNS when it was new in the stores. So um, I have all the beads I need for it and the Kranich. I just recently started this. Which one? This one. So I don't have a lot of progress. This is done on <clears throat> a Wichelt green. Can't remember exactly the right color. and it's a little bit more see-through than some of the other fabrics, but I have started near the center and worked my way up the flagpole. So it's the tippity top of the flagpole, and then I did her skin, start of, start of her skin, and then I finished her arm and worked on her torch, which is now done. I may take the beads out, and these outside ones, and put in some Nymo to get them to sparkle a little bit more, but at the moment it's not a super high priority, so it, I may just leave it. We'll see. <clears throat> it's done. <laughs> so that's what she is right now. Fairly recent start, so not a whole lot on her. I'm trying to remember the color of this green. It, I think it was a discontinued green, though, so it probably doesn't matter. I got it from an eBay seller, and so I think it was a discontinued color. Another whip I have is Ashley's Roses, and Dina from Half Stitch Cross Stitch has recently finished this. Um, and I have a couple beads there, and I believe this one is it. I started at the top, I think I just started this last year or the year before as well, so not a whole lot done on this. This is how far I am, I just started in the top, top corner, very fun color combination. It's bright and cheerful and unexpected. And I loved Dina's finish. Her finish showing the lady's dress. If you haven't seen it, go look it. I'll definitely link everybody below that I mentioned and um, links to the patterns that are still available and all of that will be in the description box. <clears throat> and I'll link my old finish parade too, if you care. I'm also considering at some point doing a full coverage parade. If anyone's interested in that, let me know see what I have going, what I've finished, and what I have in stash, which isn't as much as Mirabilia is. I have a lot more unfinished or unstarted and kitted Mirabilia's than I do not started full coverage. Um, my next whip on the pile is Villa Mirabilia, which I believe is also out of print now. She's a big lady. Just a couple beads in her. <clears throat> She's in this ginormous tube here. And she is on a, something like willow green, maybe, or something similar. Similar to what's called for, but maybe slightly different, whatever the LNS had that where I was when I kitted this up. And here she is. Woo! She's 
she is big. This is a fat half of green fabric. Um, yeah, it's really hard. It's a little greener than you're seeing, but that's okay. Um, she's really pretty. And recently, I this past year or so, I did her beads in her hair, which is really fun. And I worked my way up to do this um, arch at the top. So um, I'm currently working on Stargazer, but when I get to a good stopping point on her, if I feel like changing to her before she's finished, I'm going to come to this one because I think this one needs to be done. She's cool. I need to work on her again. <clears throat> Even though my seasonal queens need attention because they have a spot on the wall, I think she needs some she needs some more love. <laughs> so that's Villa Mirabilia. And she is a big girl. So lots to roll up there. I keep all my projects in tubes because I roll I stitch in hand with them on, in a roll. So I use recycled wrapping paper tubes and recycled tubes from the fabric store and sometimes just cardboard tubes or cardstock homemade tubes. Here's my last, no, not my last whip, last one on the pile of fell over. This is Winter Queen. I also recently started her, so she's not got a lot of progress either. Um, she's got all of her, uh, I think most of her goodies. I might still have a few more I need to acquire for her. <clears throat> Here she is. I just realized. Oh, I think she's still down there. Okay. Talking to myself. Here's where Winter Queen is now. So fairly uh, new progress on her. She's got, I started in the middle and worked my way up. There's some white in there. And then I worked on her face, got her face done. And now um, next time I work on her, I'll work on her hair and her crown. So that's where she's at now. And I probably will start summer um next year in 2020 just so that I can have all the spring all the seasonal queens at least started so but I have lots of things kitted so I think she, summer queen makes sense I also have I think this is my last Mira whip is stargazer which I recently showed on my video and this is a some slight conversion from the original. I'm working this on some hand dyed linen that I dyed myself. What was the last one I showed you? Oh, some Winter Queen's on white. Ashy's Roses was on like something slightly off white. I can't remember what it was called. <clears throat> like bisque or something. So let's get this folded over so we can still see the pretty blue. And that's too far. <clears throat> that's as far as I am on Stargazer. Got some of the beads started, got her face started. Got to stay back here, I guess. <laughs> and I'm changing almost all the colors. Her main skirt is gonna be the same light blue and then everything else is different. <clears throat> She's really pretty. I'll probably work on her another month or two before I move on to Villa Mirabilia. I don't know what sort of goal I want to have on her before I move on, but I think she is too big to kind of keep working on until she's done because as you can see, I have lots of pretty things to choose from. <clears throat> then I have a couple lavender and lace whips. The first one is Nantucket Rose. Um, which I am doing in Anne of Green Gables conversion. So I changed her hair to red and I'm changing the house to green for, for Green Gables. And this one is on gray. I forget what color gray. It's MCG Textiles, dove gray maybe. <clears throat> and here's where she's at. I've got her hair converted, start on the trees start on her shirt and a start on the greenhouse. I don't know that I'm 100% in love with the colors, but they're not all in, in there yet, so I think it'll be okay. 
So that one, that's that one. <clears throat> And then my last lavender and lace whip is Enchanted Alphabet with a little girl with some with a bunny and a dove and then a bunch of pretty alphabets. And this is all charted multicolored. It's not a variegated floss. So that's kind of cool. I'm doing this one on 56 count. One over two. Um, lakeside linens, I think it's like, um, lent, not lentil, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, I could put it on the screen if I, if I can find it, but so far I've got some letters done, and it's all DMC, charted variation in the letters, very fun to work on, once these little stitches are finished, just one over two, they're like a 25 count stitch. So it's really tiny and really, really fine fabric. So that's a lot of fun. And this is a little bit, again, a little bit greener than it's showing up. Green is a really hard color to photograph and film. So the rest of this stuff I have is stash. And I'll show you the kitted things first, things that are partially or fully kitted. <clears throat> the first thing on the pile is lavender and lace, Isabella's garden. And she's a little girl with a pretty dress blowing some bubbles. And I was gifted all of the DMC along with this and then recently added some Wichilt brown, I can't remember the exact color, to go with it. So it'll be a lot like the model where the balloons or the bubbles will pop off of that. So that's ready to go. <clears throat> I also have Lavender and Lace Little Wings, which I wanted to try. I think this is... 40 count and it's a another green color there's a cat here in there <laughs> so I'm going to try that on that because this does not have any beads so I don't have to worry about trying to find smaller beads um, and I may do a conversion of her dress I'm not entirely sure <clears throat> what I want to do I might just switch the colors and do like the burgundies for the main dress and then the green for the highlighted parts of her bustle I prefer burgundy so we'll have to wait and see on that but that's my that might be what I'll do I'll just switch the colors of what her dress looks like <clears throat> I have Christmas visit by butternut road which is also doesn't have any beads so I currently have it kitted up with some vintage um, misty rain by lakeside linens it's 46 count that's a nice um, a little bit darker than, yeah, that's better. It's kind of um, a grayish blue, and I thought that would be really pretty with that to show the, this this door in the background is just backstitched a little bit. So it's a very light door in the background. I thought that would be pretty on some gray. So currently, I think I have more fabric than I need for this. Um, so I could use the fabric for something else in addition to this also. <clears throat> Whoops. The next thing I have, I showed fairly recently because I just got this fabric. Uh, it's from Cross Stitch Gold, July 2010, and I got this pattern at a um, Cross Stitch Retreat, SoCal Stitchers Cross Stitch Retreat. This is by Joan Elliott, my only Joan Elliott, and it's May Day Celebration, May Day Celebration. A bunch of girls dancing, and I'm going to do it on Coloring Cotton. <clears throat> hand dyed Jobelin spring morning and I'm gonna my plan is to use some fancy floss on their dresses instead of the charted um, variation like I'll keep the little flowers that she has but the base color I think I'm just gonna like stitch diagonally with a fancy floss and I think that'll be fun because I have a lot of floss that I'm trying to use up so <clears throat> that's my one Joan Elliott and it is kitted I have all the DMC, so I never, a couple of these have the floss with it because that's, I was gifted that. Um, but if I just kit it up myself, I don't put the floss with it. I just um, use my master set. And <clears throat> occasionally there'll be a 
like a silk called for. Um, most of the ones I have don't call for any silks because they're old enough. She didn't use used to do that. And I have a couple of them that do, and I have, there's one I think that has some silk that I was gifted along with the pattern. So I have that ready to go. This is another one kitted, is Lady of the Mist. Uh, Lorna, the Ladybird Stitcher, finished this, I think, a year ago. <clears throat> and I'm going to stitch her on light denim by Coloring Cotton to be a nice misty color. And I do not have any of her beads, so she is still partially kitted. So if I decide to stitch, her, start her at, um, at some point, I will need to get her beads. So I think another, other ones are probably closer to starting because they have more... Um, more supplies available. This next one is Roses of Provence, also by Mirabilia, and I'm going to do this on Stonehenge by Color and Cotton. It's a little greener than it's showing, but I thought that would be a really pretty one. <clears throat> and again, no beads for this one, so only partial kit. This is, there's a couple of these here. Again, some I showed recently in my video. This is Lily of the Woods that I received from Elizabeth, Vintage Stitches. And I'm going to work stitch this on Color and Cotton's Nightshade, um, which is also Belfast Linen. I think that would be really pretty to show a night fairy. And I'm also going to stitch the Christmas Elegance on Color and Cotton Nightshade. And she has most of her beads, maybe all of them. She might have a few more. So she is mostly ready to start. Get these back in here. Maybe after this I can organize these a little bit better. They were getting a little bit loosey-goosey in my box in my closet. <clears throat> Another one that I've had for a long time, kitted with the called for fabric is Cottage Garden Fairy, and I never really wanted to start it, and maybe it was because it was on this brown fabric, it didn't really call to me. Recently, I believe, hmm, yeah, it's possible this is the one I gave that fabric to. I think that was the fabric, and I gave it to Isabella's Garden instead because it fit that one with the colors. And then, um, Although now that I think about it, I have another fabric that's gr darker green that might actually work better than brown. Hold that thought. But anyways, um, recently I was gifted some Holiday Mint Lugana by Color and Cotton. And it's bright and cheerful and I think it will look really nice with this fairy. So this is a lot more of a, um, a lot more interest in starting that one than I used to have. I don't have any beads for it, so I would have to get those. <clears throat> so that one's partially kitted. And let's go find that other one. That, yeah, this one. This is Titania, Queen of the Fairies. And Stephanie, Miss Oso Crafty, recently finished this one. And I'll link all these people below, so if you want to go check them out, you can go see their, their finishes. This is some Olive Garden, all, Olive Garden, Olive Green. Belfast linen, um, that's pretty pretty true, that I thought would be really nice with her. I got this, it's like, it's 36 by 48. It's a huge piece. I got it when Needlework Plus was going out of business recently, so it's a huge piece. I thought she would look wonderful on there to be more of a gardeny feel to her. And now that I'm thinking about it, this could also look really good on this darker green because I think... Her dress is a different enough color that I think it would still pop and these bubbles would pop because it's a dark enough green and you'd still be able to see the, um, what do you call it, the little garden down there, the flowers. So I may actually do that and so I still have some brown to do something with. So I'm, I'm liking that idea because I think she would look, I think this Isabella's garden would look a lot better on green than brown. So maybe I'll go ahead and put her in here too to remember what I'm thinking. And I will take this Witchel Amber. This is Amber. 
So this is a newer piece that I bought from something else. So it's, well, maybe not. Chestnut is what they called for. So yeah, I don't know. I think amber is a fairly new piece, so I'm not sure what where where I put the other stuff. It might be this one. Natural? No, this is the one that came with it. Oh, I put it in here. This is the darker fabric that came that just that Cottage Garden Fairy had used. <clears throat> and I'll show you this one now. This is Cassiopeia. I received this by from um, Debbie Duarte, I think, and she gave me the DMC for that. And I kitted her up with this dark um, brown because I'm not planning to do all this background. I'll do the, the couch and her, but I think the rest, her and the couch um, would pop on this brown. So I was gonna use that brown from Cottage Garden Fairy for her instead. So, um, so now I have two for that dark green kitted. And my amber still needs a home. So there's something I can do with that one. Ooh, I may have found it. Just, we'll get there. Okay, so this is another one that was pretty much fully kitted for me by my mother-in-law. This is Sabrina. <clears throat> and she is stitched on natural linen, which is a lot darker than the picture, but I think her dress will really pop on that. She comes with some water lilies and various beads, and there's a Krynik in there, so my mother-in-law got me all of those fun things, which is really nice, so she is ready to go. I should probably start her, too, because she's ready to go. And another one that is, I think, fully kitted is Summer Queen, and I have her kitted up with white. Actually, this is probably technically Oyster, MCG Textiles Linen, um, which all the rest of them are on white, so it's fine. She'll match all the other MCG white queens that I have finished. And she's got all her beads, so she is ready to start next year also. <clears throat> and I have three more that are just kitted. I'm not kitted, they are just the pattern. This is one I recently got, I showed you in my last video by Butternut Road. It is Once Upon a Time, I believe. And she has a dove and there's a background castle that's backstitched and maybe a little bit stitched. But you know what I just thought? <laughs> that, that could work. So, I think that's happening. So now that's partially kitted. Woohoo! Gotta get a, a bag for that. And then I have, um, this was given to me by Becky G, I believe. She found it at a, a little sale at a library. Ivy Wed. I'm not a fan of another bride. I've already done a bride. Um, but I like the thought of maybe doing a color conversion of taking off the veil and the loop and just making her more like a burgundy outer dress and maybe cream, light pink, green, gold. I don't know. That's up in the air. No plans to start that, but it's, I'll probably do a color conversion with that one, make her a real lady, not a, not a bride. And then this is Christmas Rose by Lavender and Lace. <clears throat> Winter Rose, just kidding. I think it has either one, Christmas rose or winter rose. And she's cute. She's a little one. I don't have any any new materials for her yet. Because I think she could... Um, does she have any beads? She, I don't think she has any beads. So potentially... <clears throat> where was that other one? I could do her on this also. That's nice, a nice icy color to go with the ice skating scene and do Christmas Visit and Winter Rose on that vintage Misty Rain that Shelly got me. So, Shelly Key X Stitch. So that's all of my fancy ladies that I have, and I love this genre. I, I've always wanted to try designing a fancy lady, but I don't think I could do any of these designers justice. Um, so at some point, um, I might give it a whirl, but I really, <laughs> I just enjoy stitching other people's genius. So um, they're all very pretty. A lot of the newer ones haven't necessarily appealed to me, so I haven't bought any new ones recently. They're, um, I'm really happy with the stash I have. I have plenty, 
plenty, plenty, plenty to keep me busy for a very long time. So that's a lot of fun, and I will probably be starting several of them in the new year. I don't know which ones, and it's our only March, so it'll be a little while before I have to decide that. I won't start all of the ones I have kitted because that's just too many, but um, I'll pick a select few and start a few of those. Hopefully make some progress on my whips this year. And so total I have six finished Mirabilia's, one finished Lavender and Lace, one finished Shannon Christine Designs, six Mirabilia whips, two Lavender and Lace whips, and an uncountable amount of stash. I didn't, I didn't count them. <laughs> so anyways, I will hopefully be back Monday or Tuesday to give you a proper stitching update. And until then, happy stitching. Bye.